In this video, I'm going to share with you how I make a transparency like this one here in order to make a cyanotype print from my photographs. It's really a pretty simple process. I'm using an iPhone 16, so I'll be going through the process using what I have on this phone, but there are many other apps and other phone systems that will do pretty much the exact same thing. Your first step is to choose a photo. You want to keep it simple. You don't want a lot of distractions in the background, especially for your first couple that you're doing. And high contrast is always good. That's why I like this one. The original photo was taken looking directly up at the sky. So I'm looking at these palm trees from an underneath perspective. I've got the blue and the white of the sky, a little bit of green and brown, but that's not going to give me the strong contrast that I need. So I'm going to need to make a few changes. The first thing I always do is make a duplicate. I never mess with the original photo because I wanna always be sure that I have that to go back to. So I'm going up here and on my phone, it gives me the duplicate option. So I now have two copies of this, pic this particular photo. From there, I'm going to convert that photo to black and white. And that again, depends on your phone and how it does the changes that you can make. So I'm gonna go into my ed editing mode right here. And I have a mindset calls it styles. And I can go through styles and I can come to stark black and white, which is pretty good in and of itself, but I'd like to take it one step further and get a little bit more contrast, maybe take a little bit out of this background. Now, sometimes the new iPhones I've discovered can do a little of that for you because you can go into that stark contrast and change it up manually like this. My older phone couldn't do that, so I developed a system that works with just about any phone that you would want to do. So I'm going to leave it the way I came here. And I'm going to go into a different app. I'm going to use Photoshop Express for the next steps. And again, if you have an older phone, you might want to go ahead and save this. It's the way I had always done it in the past. So it's been saved. And then I go back in and get it again. Go into editing mode. I have that option to revert, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go in here and I have extensions that lead me to my other apps. Yours may be different. It may You may have to go directly to the app from your app extensions like this. So I'm going to Photoshop Express. And for some strange reason, it makes me cancel and then go back again. And I haven't figured out why, but it does. So I just go with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay here in looks, which is over here in Photoshop Express, the looks, and I'm going to go to black and white in looks, and I'm going to choose high contrast black and white. So now I've deepened my contrast. It's still a little, little bit here, so I can go back and forth and make mod moderate changes. I can take a little bit of that out make it stronger, make it weaker. I can go back and forth until I have the contrast that I like. I'm just gonna keep it a little, yeah, kind of in the middle for this one. Then I'm going to go back into looks, go back to the beginning of looks, because the next step, I need to invert that. Because if I were to print this on my transparency, everything that is black in the picture right now is going to be white on my paper because it's going to prevent the sunlight from going through and I don't want that. So I'm going to go into basic and in basic I can go through and there's an option to invert my image. Now I have the image that I really need in order to create a cyanotype. So I'm going to save that as done and done. Now I have it saved and once it's saved I can print. I use an inkjet printer and transparency film. Um, I was for this one. I used uh, just some watercolor paper, and my transparency film is from Staples. You can get that at any office supply store or Amazon. So that's the process for making the negative 
The next step in this video, I'm going to share with you how I actually do the cyanotype. I decided to go ahead and print transparencies both with the inverted version of the photo and the version that was not inverted so that you can see the difference when you actually get a cyanotype print. So you'll notice that in the next video sequence. Okay, my black and white transparencies are dry and ready to use. I'm just going to keep them on some white copy paper just to keep them clean and fingerprint free while I'm working. I've taped off two sheets of Arches watercolor paper and I've got it taped off so that I have plenty of room around these. I checked the size to make sure that I didn't tape into any areas that I wanted to have remain free for my images and it works. So I'm gonna put my images aside in a safe place and mix up my solution with my A and my B. I have a little sponge brush, that's what I like to use. And I have these great little gelato cups. I've had them for years because they have a neat little line right around here that's perfect for measuring. I haven't used these for a while. I mixed them up a while ago. Haven't used them for a while, so I'm going to shake them up a little bit. And I'm going to fill a B container. And I'm going to shake up the A. And add the add an A. I'm going to take a little glass. This was from yogurt. Uh, works out really good. And I'm going to mix the two together. And right now, because it's the solution is a little bit old, it has a little bit of gritty looking pieces in it. That has absolutely zero effect on your work. The next thing I'm going to do is simply spread the cyanotype solution over the paper. And you can see I'm going to work rather quickly because I am in a room with the windows unshuttered and I don't want this to start to turn too quickly. So I'm going to shut the lights off and close things down. I will be putting a second coat. Right now I'm going in an up and down motion. I'm going to put a second coat on in a, a cross motion and then a third coat if it looks like it could use a little bit more after that. So for now I'm going to shut the shades. So that I don't get the darkening. The lighting that I'm using here is not going to have an impact on the cyanotype solution. It's the sunlight, the ultraviolet radiation that does that. So I'm going to give these a nice coat of cyanotype solution. And then because I'm using an inkjet printed transparency, I'm going to make sure that these are super dry before I do any printing with these because I have had in the past, I have totally ruined transparencies because I got impatient and put them ink side down on slightly damp paper and with an inkjet transparency you just set yourself up for a lovely disaster. I also have these side by side because I want to make sure that everything I do is this as, as as much the same as possible. So I'm going to put this in a dark closet and 
this one could get interesting. When I took the dried paper out of the closet, it looks like it had gotten completely speckled with something that fell from the shelf above. My fault for not checking. It, it is my art closet and things are not always as clean and neat and tidy as we would like. But I'm gonna go ahead and place the pieces on here, my transparencies. I have them ink side up. Um, yeah, I think I wanna put this one going. I'm gonna have, I'm, I'm really trying to compose how I'm gonna frame them later. Um, I'm not, it doesn't really matter because I can flip the paper any way I want in the frame, but I'm playing around with composition, having these in the corners and these going, creating my diagonals. I could do different things with framing. I could, then they're exactly the same, which I'm not too crazy about. I could do that. That's kind of interesting. This means flipping this one so that the ink side is down, which is fine but it'll give me possibly some interesting options for framing as well. So I'm gonna go with that, just because. And put this in place. It doesn't matter if they are absolutely perfectly straight underneath my plexiglass, because in the end, I'm going to mat the images anyway. So I have that down. I like to use binder clips where possible, just to give it some security. Uh, today's a little bit breezy outside, so this will help secure the glass while it's in, in the sunlight. It's a little more difficult for the binder clips to touch the glass. Down here, they don't quite fit, and I don't wanna risk having that image across my artwork. So I'm going to take pieces of the blue painter's tape and just press it down and kind of cover it. Press that glass down a little bit. It's going to leave marks up here, but that isn't going to matter because that's going to be underneath a mat in the end. So I have that pressed down. It is middle of March in Ohio, in Southwest Ohio. So our sunlight is not as intense as it will be uh, later in the season. So for today, I'm going to check this after about 20 minutes in the sunlight. So I'll see you in about 20 minutes and I may leave it in a little bit longer if it looks like it needs a little more time. Okay, I'm out here at the edge of my deck and it's already starting to turn. I'm getting a nice greenish color where it was that yellow green. Now it's turning almost a blue green, kind of a teal. And it's only been about oh, maybe a minute. So this may could go a little quicker than I expected. So I'll check back again. I decided to come in after 15 minutes because I'm a little concerned that this may have actually overexposed a little more than I thought. The sun seemed to have been a little more intense than I was bargaining for. So I'm going to rinse this out and see what I get. Okay, this is how they look straight out of the water bath. Um, there's not as, the background is a lot more blue. You can tell by where I pulled the tape away. It has a very light blue, but that's not unattractive. It isn't that really bright white, but the details are good, um, especially in the leaves of the trees to the side there. I'm not at all unhappy with that detail that came out, but it's going to be interesting to see how much contrast there is after the paper is completely dry. That's going to take a while. 
Here are the images 24 hours after washing, so they are completely dry. I'm not totally unhappy with them. I do think they have a few flaws that I'm not real happy with, and that's probably due to that little mess in the closet uh, combined with the rougher texture of the cold press watercolor paper. So I'm going to get some hot press paper and try that smoother surface to see if I'm a little happier with them. But overall, a success.